Bodog poll question today. We're asking you, should the Canucks still trade a winger? Yes or no? You can vote at Sakarison Price on Twitter. Bodog, your source, free casino games. Poker strategy, sports odds, Bodog, line of the day from me. You know, there's lots of drama around the Canadian women's soccer program right now as they head down under for the World Cup in just over a week, their first match. They're huge favorites to beat Nigeria. But as we saw with the men, distractions at a tournament like this don't help. Underperformance, maybe Nigeria gets a draw at plus 440. Matt, on your boat, dog. There's no team with more distraction at the World Cup than Nigeria. They are. You think Canada's got a labor dispute? The Nigerians are on the verge of being sent home from the World Cup over labor. Like it, Canada's labor dispute looks like micro next to Nigeria's labor dispute. So bet against me on your boat <laughs> line of the day. Patrick Johnson of the Province and Post Media stops by. How are you? Well, you got me thinking about standing outside Cameron's training session at uh, UBC in 2015, pondering how am I going to get these women to talk about the strike that nobody's talking about, but that yeah. they were on. Anyway, I'm well. It's nice out. You know, we're in summer <laughs> mode. <laughs> uh, answer me the Bodog poll question in light of Nils Hoaglander signing for a, a re-signing for a couple of years here. And, and then answer me where you think Hoaglander is going to start the season or Bodog <laughs> poll from yesterday. Well, I mean, he's on an NHL deal, so isn't he going to be in the NHL? Um, Waiver I, exempt, of course. You can send him down to uh, manipulate your roster and lineup as I, you wish for, yeah. to start no, the season. Yeah, one one more game, right? Isn't that what it was? Yeah, two, two, I think. Two, I think. Yeah. two yeah. more games. But, yeah, you look at the roster and you're just like, well, something's got to give because just, you know, as it is right, as it stands right now, you got three extra forwards. And that's not counting Tanner Pearson. I mean, Sheldon Drys is probably going on waivers. Jack Sudnika is probably going on waivers. Phil G. Giuseppe, I think they want to keep around. But, you know, there's this question about Tanner Pearson where, you know, obviously last week, uh, Patrick Alvin very positively speaking about it. You know, I think there's, what was it, Drager was, uh, I'm not so sure. Is that what we said? Um, you know, but that's like right there. They've already overloaded. They've got a full extra line of guys. And you go into training camp with more guys than you need generally because somebody's going to get hurt and you're going to, you'd rather have more than less. Um, but yeah, they've got, they've got, you know, I mean, right as it stands, I mean, who's, where does Connor Garland fit? Where does Brock Messer fit? Where does Vasily Podkolzin fit? Um, where does Anthony Bavillier fit? Where does, you know, the list goes on. Um, you know, Dakota Joshua is going to be there because they love him. Um, and yeah, Hoaglander has been signed to a $1.1 million per season deal. Um, that is a, essentially an NHL salary. I mean, that is a depth NHL salary. Um, someone's got to go. I just, I have a hard time seeing them carrying on from here with that setup. It just seems too wild. Um, but I guess we'll see. Other teams are successfully getting rid of salary why yeah. you know other teams are making a something for nothing trade just to get salary relief mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, are, are the Canucks assets that bad that they can't do that or do you think they, they for some reason just don't want to they just believe that their guys are worth something and we need something back well I think they're just I mean I do think they they don't feel as much I mean they made the they made the space with OEL I don't think they feel as much pressure they spent it all. They're already back. But they spent the it all now. But <laughs> yeah. now we're back. Yeah, exactly. Now, you know, they are now, you know, they basically are in LTI. Like, they're going to yeah. have to figure something out. Um, and, I, yeah, like that's I said. Like, there's just too much. Like, it's not just there's smoke here. There's an actual fire. Mm -hmm. You know, they're over the cap. They have to make some decisions. Um, and guys are going to have to, guys are going to, they're, they're going to have to make some other changes. So, yeah, it's just the logic of the situation. You're exactly right. Other teams have moved out money. Like, this is not, this is not, um, it's not like things aren't happening anymore. Um, well, the worry would be that they, the teams that were willing to take on that money, uh, they've sort of hit their quota on how much they were willing to do that. And there may not be many spots left. They, yeah. they may have run out of time, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, to yeah. borrow a phrase yeah but but yeah but you know you still look like there's still lots of teams out there that have anaheim is you know anaheim has loads of space <laughs> like they're under the floor in fact um you know the, the chicago arizona yeah i mean seattle seattle has space nashville has space like there's there, there's are teams that out there still with 
a willingness to spend. I mean, Detroit went and added Alice to Prinkett and are still well under the cap. Yeah. So, and didn't give up much uh, in terms of NHL salary or NHL player yeah. even. Yeah. Um, do you see yeah. um, Do you see an unlocking of this trade market anytime soon? I mean, there's still some really big, delicious names out there available in trade. And it would appear to me that, you know, unless one of these teams that we just talked about like in Detroit, is going to step up and make a deal for one of these players without money going the other way. Yeah. You know, is it possible we see some blockbusters here? Like we did that one summer with Subban for Weber, just because you got to make hockey trades if no one can actually make cap additions of that order. Yeah, I mean, we still look at the top. You look at who's still available as a free agent. You got Patrick Kane, you got Tarasenko, Dumba. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, then you go down a tier or two to Bailey Tatar or club, you know, like there, mm-hmm. there, there's, there's guys that are there. And to me, it's those guys that are going to kind of set the rest that, that once those situations get resolved a little bit, um, the other team's going to be, okay, well, we missed out on this guy. Maybe we can get that guy. Um, but yeah, I think there's still, there's, there mm-hmm. is room in the system for things to keep happening. I, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's going to be a quiet summer. There's a uh, there's a, an unbelievable amount of defensemen that are seemingly available. Um, no, they're not all the unicorn right shot defensemen, but yeah. are, are we surprised that that like decent defensemen are available? I guess everybody's got a price though. But I mean, the Pesci's and Carlson's, and I mean, even on the free agent market, as you mentioned with Dumba. But if you needed a defenseman, there are defensemen out there right now. Yeah, I, I am surprised a guy like Matt Dumba is a right shot defenseman, and he's a pretty yeah. solid defenseman. I, I, I you know, I, and only, only twenty eight, you know, but he was playing twenty one minutes a night last night. It's not like this guy has forgotten how to play hockey. Um, so a bit surprised that he hasn't landed anywhere. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like there are teams that are ready. Like <laughs> Carolina clearly is ready to do some stuff. Um, yeah, like I said, I think it's just about settling a little bit of the top end of that free agent market. That's just that that mm. to me seems like the simple logic of it all. Um, that that will start unlocking some stuff. What's your forecast for Tyler Myers? <laughs> well, I know you had a guest on the other day suggesting that they may have already paid it out uh, bonus there. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case. Certainly, the Canucks could. Um, it, in theory, I think it's one of these ones where, like, the the thing to recognize about this is the thing I've always a sort of the way the Canucks have set up their bonuses. I guess is the way to put it. Is my my, my I I've always sort of assumed it's because well, all the season ticket money comes in over the summer, and then there's money in the bank, and you know, I mean, in the end, this has generally been a money out money in money out ownership group. Um, and so that's why the timing is there. I mean, I think, I, I as far as I know, you could go to the league and say, well, we'd like to pay this a bit earlier, and you either have to amend the contract or you simply, you know, as long as the bonus gets paid in the season that it's due, there's no, like, that's the cap. The cap is set that way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think... You know, certainly it sounds like, I mean, we know they've been trying to, they've been trying to trade him since almost the day this management group showed up. Um, they, they just decided this was just not a player that fit what they where they were going, uh, what they wanted to do. And certainly you can see now why they would do, I mean, we know they're, they're the cap again. I mean, they're, they're up against the cap again. And the logic is obviously already there. Uh, they would like to make some more space and change the makeup of this team. Um I, I'm still, I'm still in that. I'll believe it when I see it. Sort of mode that if they can actually find someone to take them. Um, By all accounts, like this Tony D'Angelo trade is still going to happen. They had to yeah. wait for that July eighth signpost to go by, right? But they have that agreed that trade agreed yeah. to in principle. Yeah. Chris Gear yesterday told us that hey, he wouldn't be surprised. They've got the f- same kind of deal with the, with Myers that the frameworks, yeah, tra- you know, there for the with the Sharks or whomever. Yeah, and the minute the clock strikes. Again, I still keep. I heard another reporter today say again September first. Who knows if it's the first or the fifteenth? Yeah. Um, but whatever the day that it officially gets paid out, that the, the trade happens. Maybe yeah. maybe there's something done already. Yeah, and I think you know. I mean, I think that is more the, the more likelihood is that it's just yeah. There there is actually someone sitting there waiting for them to pay the money out, and then 
boom. that'll happen and boom yeah and yeah. you know let's not forget like training camp, like september 15th normally would be like the beginning of training camp but training camp's a little bit later this year for whatever reason yeah um so it's so that's a you know in the end if that's if it's september 15 or september 1 um either way that's still i mean it's slightly before training camp um the human element is a bit more difficult because of course yep. you know he's got kid in school and all that kind of stuff but this is the business um yeah we'll uh we'll see i mean uh uh, if anybody's up in Kelowna, maybe you should ask Tyler to see how he's doing, what he thinks. Was there a couple of weeks ago, actually. Should have done it then. Yeah, My exactly. bad. Put me on Isanos. Uh Ian Cole, I, I, I think we've got to happy resolution here on the number uh, with Luke Bordeaux and the fact that he is going to be moving on to a different number yeah. after being told the story. Mm. But... Um, Avoidable for the Vancouver Canucks if this is properly administered and communicated. I mean, Fair? Could easy, yeah, and I think you know easily there there was easily a scenario where he comes out of this wearing twenty eight. Um, there's a lot we don't know, and it was you know it was a bit a bit of a funny one. Well, like, what's the typical procedure as you understand it? When a well, player I mean, goes to... yeah, you sort of yeah, here are the number. You know, at some point the discussion is made with generally the equipment staff, and they go, "Hey, what number do you want?" and what numbers available and um i'd like this one yeah that is so you know i mean i i the thing in all this is that like it's you know patty o'neill and brian hamilton like would know so they feel it feels like there was a step missing here yeah um that that an announcement was made before they kind of ran it by those guys right um because if it gets to patty or red they say to you and look 28's available. It just, you know, hasn't been worn since Luke Bordeaux yeah. passed tragically. Yeah. Maybe we should make a phone ago. call. Like I, yeah, you know, like I don't get the, yeah. And, and then the player makes the choice from that point forward, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it just felt like it was, you know, it's it's a pretty simple process. and um, But usually there's a few little reasons why. You know, I mean, in the end, like we all know, there's a reason why the number 11 is only been given well has only been given out once um was it given out or was it requested or demanded well, to similar to similar effects right i yeah. mean people have the same problems yeah and so it's, i mean I, I this is not i don't think it's a defense of this organization but it's not like it's the first time this organization has not checked in you know like i i i, you know, I have no idea I, I i have no idea you know how the burdo family would feel about this um but yeah, that, well, it, it just there was just steps missed, and it, it was just it's sort of like, what, what, it's the middle of summer. Why are you rushing this out? Like, get it, just get all your ducks in a row. Yeah. Well, it, it, Patrick, is is this a, also a function of the fact that there's not a lot of people in that front office anymore who are sort of of Canucks culture and understand British Columbia yeah. and Canucks culture and history and story? Yeah. Is that, I, but yeah, that at least it, has to go through the comms department. The comms department does have people that know the story. So yeah, that, I mean, that I, that's the comms department that's pointing that out, putting that out. I will point out that a few years ago, uh, actually, no, the Sedin season, um, they set up those lockers before they were the, the Sedin retirement seat. So before the mm -hmm. retirement ceremony, they set up these locker spaces up on the, I think it's 300. And they've got the, the, the retire, at least they had the retired sort of, Stalls, so they had Bray and Linden and Smeal and Asland, um, and then they set the sedines around, sort of just around next to it. And in the display, they had a bunch of old gear, you know, sort of simulated old gear, mm -hmm. you know, old Cooper helmets mm -hmm. and things like that. And I actually looked up and noticed that the white helmets were missing the Canucks decals, which you know, and I'm not going to lie, guys, I've you know, I've al I've always been a detail guy on that kind of thing. Um, and I know most people don't notice. You yeah. know, I, mm -hmm. I care about these things, and most people are like, "Oh, where where's the game tomorrow?" You yeah. know, um, you know. And I used to joke like you talk to players, and you, you kind of chat back, chat, chat back and forth with them. And you know, I used to you'd get these questions. Sometimes they'd ask you questions, and I used to sort of mention that people like, you know, it's always a reminder that hockey players have no idea what's going on. You know, and and I think most people are just kind of like, huh. And I noticed that this was missing, and I kind of quietly mentioned it to someone on the Canucks staff. Huh. And they looked, and they were actually kind of, they were mortified that they themselves had missed it. 
and then they fix it and the sticker's going and it looks fine mm -hmm. and, and 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 you know so from that standpoint like <laughs> nothing surprises me anymore when details get missed it's not good uh, you should have people who are good at this stuff and you should value those people. And I'm just puffing my chest out about, about this a little bit, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, 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 missing out on things like this is not unique. This is not, again, not a defense of any of this because it's like, get it right the first time. Um, but, yeah, I, I kind of was like, oh, yeah. I'm they not used to be very this. good. They yeah. used to be very good on details, uh, yeah. I, I must say. Yeah. Uh Alrighty, sir. Well, I'll tell you what, in, unless you think that there is something um, we're missing on the Kalamazoo ECHL affiliation. <laughs> Big news. Being Big renewed. News. Well, and, and, it's a minor one. I mean, I, I, I said on the weekend, like, or was it Monday? When was Monday, it? Monday. Yeah. It was Monday, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think they, they, they've had an informal agreement the last two years. I mean, they had three guys there last year. In general, the guys that end up in your East that spend time in the ECHL generally are not going to make it. But oh, goalies, but the Alex Burrows, Alex Burrows, Alex Burrows rule. You know, and Kyle goalies. Burrows played some time. Like there are guys that that, that happens. Like you, you know, there are, there are there are reasons for it to happen. I mean, I had a mm -hmm. hilarious Colin Dealey and I had a hilarious conversation about you know a similar story. His first year in the, in pro hockey, he played in the East Coast League, and he said, you know, you're just sitting there. And there's you all of a sudden hear these guys in the dressing room, and they're trying to figure out who are they going to spear on the other team oh, wow. because there's because you know you've got guys that are trying to like basically <laughs> pump up their penalty minutes so that they have a chance to be sort of a tough guy in the AHL. Like it is slap shot. The wow. Danbury but, Trashers, yes. exactly. Yeah, right. But okay. but you know there is a purpose, and I think in the end, you know, you look back to the the Seeloff story in twenty twenty one twenty two when they did that was the first year they were they or they they had been with Kalamazoo until the season before, but Kalamazoo did play, you know, blah 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 blah. blah. They didn't actually have a formal agreement. He ended up playing in Corvier, which is was affiliated with the Jets and the Habs, if I understood correctly. Um, but you know you're looking for someone to do you a favor, and and that's not you, you would in the end when you have an affiliation you say yes our guy is coming to you and he's right. going to play exactly. And, so uh, they have an extra goalie. They're going to need probably some ice time for one right. of their goalies. Um, that's what it's about. I think wasn't that's anything. why I asked you the question. Uh, if you've got the goalie overload, then the ECHL yeah. becomes an important uh, yeah. affiliation. Uh, otherwise, yeah. for the most part, there's not a lot of there there. No. Uh, Patrick, yeah. thank you very much for this. Until next Tuesday, my friend. Take care, guys. This is the Carson Price Clip brought to you by Bodog. Make a play at Canada's Choice for free casino games, sports odds, and poker strategies.